Hi everybody, this is Jerry Dean from Missing Persons of America. Today we're going to go over a case that's local to me. The case of missing Heidi Broussard and her baby infant Margo. They've been missing for almost a week now and there's a lots of twists and turns in this case. And I'm going to go over those twists and turns with you. I'll see you in a few seconds. Austin Police Department released a statement today for missing Heidi Rossard and her infant daughter. She's only two weeks old. She'll be three weeks now, this week. And the police relief above is informative, but it's not until you read the post from her friend that you realize there's much more to it. Well, according to her, Heidi's friend Carissa Nolte, we find out that Heidi never showed up to pick up her son from childcare, and the husband picked up the son after they called him. And when he got home to the club at Summer Valley Apartments, the door was wide open, and Heidi's purse and the baby bag were there, but Heidi and her two week old baby girl Margot were gone. I read from Heidi's girlfriend's post, and neighbors said they heard loud voices like an argument that day. Was it Heidi and Shane or someone else? Did she know them enough to get in their car with a baby? Well, if you compare Shane's story, which she's told on the media, on the news, the media, with Heidi's friend Carissa's post that I'll uh, you can I'll send a link to, you can see many differences. Where Carissa's gotten the information he is posting on social media, I don't know. If she got it straight from Shane, then it would cause me concern that there were so many discrepancies. Is she like your fiance? We just weren't sure. Uh, yes, uh, it's my fiance. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So Shane, okay. just go talk to you Yeah, I, I look down when I talk. I'm sorry, I'm going to look down the whole time probably. Yeah. There's much about the timeline, and I'm not sure Shane is actually changing his story as many are saying, or if it just appears to because of the media. Uh, so far, the general story from the media is he went home around 2 p.m. and Heidi was not home. Got a call to pick up his son, left and came back, and Heidi was still gone, and he called the police around 7 p.m. Um... So, like, once I got him up on Thursday, uh, it, was, it was kind of a later morning. It was around 6.40 whenever I got him up. And because uh, it was Heidi's first day to actually take Margo uh, by herself. You can see the latest interview. I'm going to put a link for that late interview there, too. You can see what I'm talking about. Now, I've been thinking about this case. Social media seems to be leaning towards her husband, boyfriend, Shane Tyson Carey, as having something to do with Heidi's disappearance. In fact, when I watched the video, my first impression is that he's hiding something. But I don't know what it is. There's a much longer video the news has released where Shane has given more details. Here's what I heard. Shane says they wake up at 6.30 a.m. Heidi, Margo, and Silas, the other child, went to school and he was dropped off at school and Heidi went with Margo to the book fair. Then after the book fair, they spoke on the phone, Heidi and Shane spoke on the phone and it was 8.15 a.m. For some reason, after he talks about the phone call for Heidi, he says, that's okay, and I told her I have to go because I'm on my way out. Then he says something, but it has either been cut out by the news or he's saying words without any sound, you know, like that. I don't know, but I think the news actually cut it out. I was like, that's okay, um, and I told her I have to go because I was on my way out. And uh... it appears as though he was saying where he was going. Then it goes on and Shane says he worked till one something and got home around two. Heidi was not in the apartment and Shane says Heidi's phone was turned off. But I'm wondering how he knows that. I mean, later he says he called her at 140, 
So at that point, it must be when he says her phone was turned off, it, how does he know it was turned off? I, I don't know. And then I looked it up. I said, how would you know that? How would you know if somebody's phone is turned off? And it said, quote, often when a phone is turned off or a cell phone network is unable to reach it for some other reason, like a remote location with no reception, the phone will ring only briefly. And I asked around, some people it says it just rings one time and then that's it. So the phone being in an area with no reception would make it act the same way as if it was turned off. Hmm, makes you rethink things a little bit. So Shane said he thought she was at a nearby apartment. He left to pick up their son from daycare and came home. Shane called his dad when he had not heard from Heidi and then a friend, and then he called the cops and they showed up around 7.30 p.m. So first he says that Heidi's purse and car seat, the baby's car seat, the ID was found upstairs. And he was downstairs at the time, so I'm sure he's referring to the apartment. Then he says the car seat is upstairs, the purse is upstairs, her ID, wallet, her purse was found. Then later on he says her purse was found inside the car with all the money inside it. That was in another interview. He said the purse was up here, saying he was standing in his apartment. And in the other interview, he says that it was in the car. So with all these different details coming in, twists and turns, it's really hard to decipher what is going on. I mean, there's a there's one team that believes that he has something to do with her missing, and then there's the other team that believes that he's not innocent. And actually, as of... Today, it seems there's been more people that believe he's innocent and he has nothing to do with it. But if he has nothing to do with it, then what else is left? Somebody happened to be there at that time and take off with her, or she left on her own free will. If she left on her own free will, I would think that she would probably have to be someplace where no one could reach her, no one could reach her by phone. Uh, that's why the phone is showing that she can't be... Uh, it's disconnected or turned off because she's in some remote area and she's out of contact with anybody and everything and she's with the baby and they're off someplace. That would be great, you know, if that was the case. The other, the other side of it is somebody could have walked up and grabbed her and the baby, but, the, you know, it's, it's happened. I mean, these things have happened. Or it is somebody she knows. Maybe somebody that Shane didn't know she was seeing that was involved with this. I don't know. So we are left at guessing. But the bottom line is she's still out there. And even though it's, it's, we go through these theories and we try to figure out where she's at and all that, it's human nature to do that. I mean, I do it. And I'm just trying to think of possibilities where she might be so I can start looking. But... There's so many theories, and we really don't have all the information. The police have all the information, but we don't. And so trying to build a theory around not having all this information is a really difficult thing to do. So I, it's just going to be more time before we get more information on what happened to her. I just hope she just comes home, and that that was it. And, and she's safe and sound, and that little baby is sound, because I safe and sound. I just can't imagine... Uh, her that little baby being out there all by itself so it was somebody that grabbed her or something and oh gosh we won't even go down that road <clears throat> and I also wanted to tell you I ran across this YouTube video by Braun Moxley I'm going to put a link down at the bottom so you guys can go over and look at it and I, I encourage you to go look at it because he says that he received a tip an email from somebody who said that he knew Heidi when they were in Louisiana and that Heidi and him I had an affair and he's wondering if that baby is his. And he also says in this YouTube video, uh, Braun says that the person that wrote him the email said that they knew of some physical abuse that was going on between Heidi and Shane. And I've also heard other references to there was some fighting going on between the two. I don't know. As, as usual, these are 
are not confirmed and we don't know for sure. So uh, it's once you start mixing things into the, you might come up with this, an idea you think might have happened and then you start mixing in these other pieces that you don't have any confirmation on and it just, just makes things uh, really hard to figure out what might have happened. So Braun is turning all that information over to the Austin Police Department. I have to give them kudos. I mean, I've received a lot of tips over the years and a lot of information, and it's really difficult to decipher what exactly you need to do. You want to protect the person that gave you the information, but you also want to give information to the police so that they can go forward with this. It might help them discover where somebody is missing. And so balancing the two things can be really difficult. And from what I can tell from Braun, he's taking it very seriously and very responsibly. And I give him a thumbs up for that because it's not an easy thing to do to get have all this information and not want to uh, run with it. So hopefully this information will help. And it comes it turns out to be uh, true and will bring Heidi home. Another thing that I'm wondering about is the police in this. Wondering because usually you hear a lot of information back from the police. It comes from the media and the police. They send out a statement saying that she was missing on Thursday. But here we are on Monday and there hasn't really been much more to come out about it. I would think not so much for Heidi because I'm not just because of Heidi, but not so much because of a missing woman because in my experience here, they don't really go out and do any press conferences or anything when someone goes missing. But for the case of the infant baby, I'm surprised that the police have not gone and done a presser regarding the child because that is a really serious information. And we still don't know if these two are together. We're hoping they are and we hope everything is fine, but maybe they have been separated. Maybe this child is someplace else. And I would think that the police would have come forward by now and would have at least gone to the public and said, hey, if you know somebody that has a child that never had one before, uh, if you see somebody buying milk or uh, diapers that they normally don't buy diapers, uh, any kind of clue you hear baby crying in the apartment next door that you've never heard a baby before any of these kind of little things like this you think that they would put out there to the public uh, telling the public to look for a child left in a car or something something especially early on I was surprised they didn't go and come out and say hey we're looking for a baby check look inside parking lots for a car maybe sit in the back seat alone anything like that there's been nothing and then I kind of wonder, maybe it's been nothing because maybe they know something they're not telling us. Uh, police department over here is known to kind of keep to themselves and not a lot of, and let a, a lot of information out. So they may know a lot that we don't know. They might have a, an idea. And because of how they're handling this case, and they're not, they have no urgency to get the news out there that this baby is missing, I'm wondering if they have an idea what might really be going on. So, so information coming out of the case has been little bits and pieces, but I did hear that Texas EcuSearch is supposed to be coming in town and will be doing a search for Heidi, I believe either today or tomorrow. They might come in and set up and then start searching tomorrow, I'm not sure. So I think that's it. If you guys got any questions for me or something's coming up, give me a holler on any kind of cases that are coming up. I usually do a lot of research and digging on things and I can find information for you and, and let you know things. So just shoot me some questions and I'll try to answer them. Alrighty, see you next time. Bye-bye.